Hey guys, so we're back again with another board repair uh, today. Uh, this particular board is a uh, 2013 13-inch retina board. The board number on it is 820-3476. Uh, the customer mentions that there was a water spill on the rear of the unit, so probably the vent, the vents in the back. Um, it's, he said it did power up, but does not now. There's a couple things to mention in this. If you have a liquid spill on your unit, you don't need to try and power it up. Um, most likely when you get a liquid spill, the liquid has made contact with the logic board. Now if you have liquid that's made contact with the logic board, the best thing to do with the unit is to unplug the battery, unplug the power. Make sure there's no power going through the unit. Uh, with this model, you're going to have to have the uh, pentalobe screwdriver to remove the, the screws from the bottom of the uh, of the unit to take out the bottom pan and then unplug the battery. So hopefully uh, if you have that handy and you have a liquid spill, hopefully you're able to take that bottom pan off, unplug the battery, unplug your power from it, and keep it like that until you're able to uh, dry off the board, get the board cleaned up. Because uh, when you plug in the power to it, you're going to get corrosion. Uh, any liquid going through an electronic device that has power in it, it's going to cause corrosion and in turn is going to damage the the components on the board. Um, so he said that there's no power now. So most likely with the liquid spill there's been some type of corrosion on it uh, that took a little bit of time but eventually corroded enough to keep the machine from powering up anymore. So what we're going to do just to confirm this, we're going to plug in the power and see if we get any power to the unit. Now also with this model uh, the fan is going to not turn on automatically. Uh, with these particular models the the fan turns on after about a minute or two of the machine being on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feel for any heat on the CPU. Uh, with this model when it turns on it's going to instantly get warm on the CPU. So I'm going to feel and see if that gets any... Yeah, so we do have a MagSafe light uh, coming on and the fan is actually spinning up. That's interesting. Well, since we got that going on, let's go ahead and plug in a um, display to see if uh, we have a, a display. I'm going to get my display for this model. It's 2013. Plug in a display. And let's see what we get. And we have fan spin. Fan is coming on. Um, no backlight. No display. Uh, since the fan is coming on, if there was going to be a display, it would be on now. Uh, but we don't have anything. So that must be what he means by it does not power on now. Um, so we are going to look and see what we can find out. Uh, it's interesting though, the CPU isn't getting hot. So it's not posting. The CPU is not getting power. So we got something going on there. That's probably that's the reason there's going to be no display. So let's go ahead and uh, look over the board. When you have a liquid damage board, before you start going and uh, trying to figure out what the problem is, the best thing to do is to look it over under the microscope and see if you can find where there's any liquid damage. It takes a little bit of time to look it over. Sometimes some boards look liquid damage and you can automatically say, yep, there's the problem. Some boards don't show as much. Um, maybe it's just a small drop of liquid, which is all it takes to keep a board from powering on. So we're going to look the board over, get you on the microscope view, and take me off of there. And so we're going to look it over and um, let me show you this real quick. This down here is the back side of the board. He mentioned that the the liquid came in the back side of the board, so we're going to look on this area first uh, just to see if we can see anything because it doesn't look like a lot of liquid got to the board. But we're going to check it out and see what we can find out. So, nothing there. Looks like something in that port, but that's just a piece of dust. 
Uh, this is your JTAG connector. A lot of times if you get liquid damage on this and you have uh, corrosion here where these are bridged, any of these uh, connections are bridged, um, that will keep your machine from powering on because that actually goes straight to your CPU and your um, SMC. Um, and if that is bridged or shorted out, then it's going to keep your CPU from powering on, which that looks perfect. That's not a problem. See any indication of liquid damage so far? Here's your CPU. Everything's looking really clean so far. Okay, go on that side. Well, you can see a little bit of liquid damage here. And you see how these components? Let me see if we're focused the best we can. Brighten it up just a little bit. See this component here? You can see some a little bit of fading on that. Looks like it has a little bit of rust or corrosion. Um, turn it sideways, look at it as sideways here. You see a little bit of green in there underneath that chip. Let's lean it the other way and look. Let's bring it off the side of the desk here. Oh yeah. See in here. See if I can get that in the view for you. We've got some corrosion going on around this chip. Well, that's definitely a problem. No corrosion up here. Everything else looks good. This SMC chip it looks good, thankfully. So we're probably just dealing with this chip here and these uh, this capacitor and resistor here. So we'll, we'll, we'll look at we'll look at the board view and see what that chip is. So again, it's here. Let me get you back in view. Okay. All right, so we're looking at that. So let's get to the board, the board view. And we're not on this side of the board, but we're on the back side, up in this corner here. And we're talking about this chip right here. Uh, all system power good. Um, system power okay. SMC delay power good. So we, we're talking about something registering that the power is good. Um, Alright, so it's U1950. Let's look at the schematics and type that in. U1950. Alright, so PCH. Power OK generation. So we're talking about the PCH chip, which is the CPU as well. The, both the CPU and the PCH are the same chip on this unit. So that could be the reason that we're not getting any power um, to the CPU or the PCH. It's, it's just not turning on. So maybe this chip right here, the U1950 and these uh, resistors around it, um, just need to be replaced. So when, when you see liquid damage like this, you see corrosion, uh, it's best just to take the chips off, replace them and see what happens because you don't want to leave corroded chips on there anyway so we might as well go ahead and replace them and see if we have a different outcome uh, see if we got power to the, to the CPU so let's go on back over here to the uh, microscope and get you zoomed in here on the board and so we're going to remove uh, those chips right there or the, that chip in the resistor and capacitor We'll go ahead and remove these two below it as well. Oh yeah, look at that corrosion under that chip. And that pad right there is almost just completely, all the solder is completely gone. 
Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to use some of this liquid flux. That works really good at cleaning up corrosion and getting the pads back in good shape. Then turn on my, my filter here. We're going to add some leaded solder to those pads. see that pad darken it just a little bit for you. You can see this pad here. Uh, it's not really taking any solder onto it. It's got a lot of um, corrosion going on, a lot of oxidation. And the pad up here is almost done. So we've got a little bit to work with there. So I think we'll be okay. Let me add a little bit more flux. Touch it up one more time. All right. Now we're going to find a replacement board that has these parts we can pull off of that are good and put some new parts on there. Okay. Replacement board here. I'm going to pull the parts off of. Clean up this flux off of this board. And then we're going to put some of our NC559 tacky flux on here. We're going to use the hot air to remove it from the donor board. Transfer this right over here. Okay. Clean that area off again. Plug back in our power, our MagSafe. Plug in our fan, make sure we're still getting a fan spin. And let's go ahead and get a, a heat sink to put on because I think we're probably going to have power to the screen now. And right, getting our heat sink put on. We're going to get a dis our display again. Okay. 
And let's see if we have any display. Our fan spins. And looky there. We have a display. We should have the flashing folder coming up here in just a moment. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and put in... I have a test drive for this unit. Test SSD card. Power it back up. So we still have a display. Got backlight. Let's see if we get anything to boot up. There we go. So we have an Apple logo. And, and sometimes if it's not the original drive that it's used to booting up into, it takes a few more seconds to, to uh, recognize that, and then it boots in. So we're booting up into uh, my test drive here, and it looks like we are good to go. We have prepared this unit. So just a quick review on how we uh, figured this out. Um, we basically used our eyes. Uh, we knew that it had liquid damage, so we checked over the board. We figured out where is the corrosion at, um, found the corrosion, looked up in the schematics in the board view, figure out what it is, um, which ended up being the uh, PCH power good. Uh, it recognizes that the power is good and then allows the PCH to power on. Um, therefore, since it was liquid damage there and had corrosion around it, it wasn't allowing the CPU or the PCH to um, power up and therefore we were getting power to the board it was turning on but the CPU and the, the GPU the PCH everything with this chip was not powering on so we weren't getting any display um, so all we had to do is just replace those few parts that were uh, had the liquid damage around it and we're good to go um, so we're gonna get this installed into a unit to make sure every function of its working the the tripod and everything uh, but we should be good to go on this one and uh, another easy repair thankfully um, hope that helps you figure out what you can do if you're trying to diagnose a liquid damage board. Um, basically, the, the first thing you need to do is to use your eyes. Just look over the board, figure out where the liquid damage has made contact, and try to um, narrow down what those parts are and what they're for. And then you can figure out um, and try to remember those things for the future. Um, one thing to learn about this as well, it's nice that the customer did not clean the board. Um, before sending it to us. Uh, the reason why is because if the customer had cleaned it, we wouldn't have been able to locate the corrosion there in that area nearly as easy. And this could have taken hours to diagnose and figure out what's going on. So thankfully, this board had the corrosion still on the board and we were able to pinpoint what the problem was quickly. So if you are a customer and you have a liquid damage board to send to us, make sure that you don't clean the board up completely for us because it is a lot nicer and easier for us to diagnose and we can get these things repaired a lot quicker when you haven't touched them. Uh, just, a, just a hint for um, the future if you do send us a board. Anyways, I hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, give us a like. Give us a, a please subscribe. And uh, hit the bell icon on, on YouTube there so you can be notified when we get more videos up for you. Alright, hope you have a great day.